So I just wanted also quickly to say, to say a word about Arte, because you probably all know that Arte is a European TV channel in French and German language, but it's 100% financed by public funding, so there's no commercials on the channel or on our digital platforms. And, but there's also, it comes with a special mission also to work uh, with independent producers. So we have almost no in-house productions. Um, the channel um, co produces 80% co -produces of its content and we almost all of it. Um, so um, here I, I listed some of the priorities of, of Arte's web department. Um, so it's to make Arte content easily available on all digital platforms and actually we do that through creating special offers and working a lot on distribution issues. I will come to back to this later. Uh, we edit editorialize all Arte programs on these digital devices and platforms, also on social media and, and video platforms like YouTube, and that is a very important part of our strategy. We propose complementary narratives to TV programs on off the channel Arte. And we also create very specific content only for social media, specifically uh, f using the social media codes. And um, one of the most important parts of our, of our activity, though, is to produce in innovative narrative experience and new forms of storytelling. And I will come to, back to this later. So actually, I will go through a couple of examples that, that illustrate what I, I was just mentioning. So first of all, um, some examples of a digital documentary series. So I chose to, to mention briefly two, two examples. Digit is a um, uh, short documentary series about music and the, music, the circulation about, uh, of music in the, in the world in, this, in the internet era. It's 16 portraits of um, sound diggers, and it shows the way they, they sound hunt bits and pieces of music and how they use it in their own digital, um, musical creation. And actually, I wanted to show you, uh, to speak about this, um, this series because we decided to edit it in two different ways. The way there was an interactive player which had um, links which, um, which had links to other platforms and also um, um, the, um, added, there was additional content in the player um, linked to these portraits of the, of the musicians. And we also worked on a special uh, mobile version which um, integrated this whole additional content directly in a, in a vertical format and we um, used it on social media. Tulis Internet is a web magazine. It's a we weekly web magazine which um, focuses on mobilization and raising awareness in the digital era. So it's every week a different portrait of somebody who has an initiative using digital means. Um, last week we had a project of um, a portrait of an Indian um, poetry slammer um, and she uses YouTube poetry slam to, to raise awareness against violence and sexism. And we also work for, on this magazine in different formats. So there's a long version, a five to six uh, minutes version on YouTube and on the Arte player. And there's a shorter version, two to three minutes um, for social media with motion design and a lot of titles integrated in the video in order to make it screenable without the sound because we know that on Facebook, for example, the sound um, doesn't run. And we also make Instagram stories and then link directly to the, to the episodes of the series. Um, Interactive documentaries are still an important aspect on, on, on of our strategy, of course. Maybe some of you who have seen Do Not Track. That's, um, it, it was a quite successful <laughs> series we worked on with the NFB, with Louis Richard. 
it's on, about online tracking, and it usually, usually it actually uses, <coughs> sorry, tracking tools as a means of storytelling, and that's why I thought I think it's interesting to mention. Um, another interactive documentary I wanted to mention is. Um, I don't think it really appears well in my presentation. It's called How to Make a Ken Loach Movie. And it's done by the same producers than uh, Do Not Track, so it's Upion. And they worked uh, with the BFI. And what is interesting about this interactive uh, um, documentary is that it uses archive material. It's actually a linear film. And at some points, you have a split screen that appears, and you can choose either to dive into uh, an archive um, linked to the, to the interview of um, Ken Loach. The whole film is like a long interview, uh, making off of his last film, I, Daniel Blake. Or you can choose to, be with a, to remain with Ken Loach and the, whole, and the main story. Just two words about... Um, short animation. I see that all the titles of my presentations are gone. They were, they were, I had some. Um, so, Qu'est-ce tu? Is this actually a uh, short um, animation documentary series. It's 10 times um, three minutes. <clears throat> and it's, um, it's a series of interviews actually um, to people on the street about their daily life and some topics like what do you do when you get up and you're drunk and you have to go to work um, what do you do when you have when you receive a lot of stupid um, presents <laughs> and so it was very nicely animated and tu mourras moins bête is a scientific documentary series it's an adaptation of a blog for a scientific blog a humoristic blog from a person called uh, Marion Montaigne, and she focuses in every episode, it has a lot of episodes, 30 episodes, and every episode uh, focuses on the explanation of a scientific uh, phenomenon. Um, um, what happens to your brain when you drink alcohol? Uh, why are adolescents so lazy? And it's done in a very funny way. And actually, that is also a very good example of illustrating the way we approach these more uh, pedagogical so, um, subjects, because we don't like to treat them too literally, but the humor creates a, a, a nice distance to it. So, um, another important field in, field, sorry, in our activity is video games. So we work, we co-produce three to four video games every year, and we do it with independent video uh, um, game studios, just the way we work on other interactive projects. So this is Typewriter, uh, was the first one to be released. There was a mobile version released in 2013, and um, it just was released for Xbox and PlayStation this year. It's uh, the art and history of typography. Um, and actually, the way we work on video games, um, we have a mixed business model. As a public broadcaster, we need, uh, we are 100% financed by public funding. So we feel that we need to give part of the content back for free to the users. So we always offer a free version of the video games. And so Typewriter had five levels. Um, for free on our website, and the rest was a paid app. Um, California is another video game we released last year. It's very different. It's actually not really documentary, but I chose to mention it because it came alongside with the uh, programming, um, with a documentary on, on the science fiction author Philip K. Dick, and also a short VR fictional piece and it's, it's a very beautiful graphical game. It's not mobile, although we try to focus on mobile games um, because they are just more easily accessible for a larger public, which is our public in on Arte. And um, so it was a PC, Mac game, uh, first exploration game, very much inspired. Every level was inspired by the universe 
of, of Philip K. Dick. Uh, 360 and VR is increasingly important in our offer. We, Arte has a 360 app for videos and series, 360 series, and, but we also work on interactive VR and uh, the next steps will be VR games. Here's an, an example of a 360 uh, video documentary we, we co-produced. It was 10, year, 10 years after La Marche de l'Empereur, Jean-Luc Jacquet and his team came back to the Antarctica to, to measure the, the impact of climate change. And there were two TV documentaries and a three-part 360 video series was part of this whole programming focus. And one example of interactive VR um, <clears throat> we released also by the end of last year is Notes on Blindness. Notes on Blindness was also a TV documentary and it was and the VR piece and the doc TV documentary were, were <clears throat> produced at the same time. French um, British co-production. It um, both we consider both documentaries, the, the VR, VR piece as well. It's the story of a man, John Hull, a writer who lost his sight in the in the 80s, and he registered registered his whole experience every day on audio cassettes. And so the audio cassettes are the the soundtrack, the whole soundtrack of the film and the VR piece. I will show you a trailer because it's maybe easier to see. Ach. This is cassette one, track one, notes on blindness. Sitting in the park with the children, I hear the footsteps of people walking past me, rustling of the newspaper, murmur of conversation. The myriad voices and sounds create a panorama of music and information. Where there is no activity, there's no sound. And then that part of the world dies. The earliest experience of panic took place in the middle of December. I left the house, but had only gone about 100 yards when I was aware of a growing feeling of doubt and uncertainty as if I was banging my head, my whole body, against the wall of blindness. As one goes deeper into blindness, the things which once one took for granted then tried desperately to compensate for, in the end, cease to matter. I think I'm beginning to understand what it's like to be blind. Now, I just wanted quickly to mention a really small project for the end. It's called Ite, and it's a graphical novel which will come out uh, by the end of June. And it's, um, I only put two slides of the storyboard in the slide here. It's um, the whole principle of a graphical novel, novel but um, entirely conceived for Instagram in Instagram stories. So it's really specially designed for social network. And that was it. Thank <laughs> you.